The Cubs have returned home to spring like weather and they're trying to stop the hottest team in baseball currently. The Milwaukee Brewers are in town winners of eight in a row. The Cubs coming off a three and two road trip. It's the first of a four game set here on NBC Sports Chicago. Great to have you here at Wrigley Field along with Jim Deshays. I'm Len Casper. These two teams uh, match up about 19 times a year and the Cubs beat the Brewers three out of four in early April. Yeah the uh, Cubs really pitched well in that series up in Milwaukee as a matter of fact pitched two shutouts against the Brewers uh, three out of four they won 13 extra base hits averaging five runs per game. Uh, they hit the long ball three times but since then the Brewers have been playing very good baseball as you mentioned eight consecutive W's for the Brewers and they've been a little banged up we'll get to their injury situation a little bit later uh, they've been scoring some runs but mainly they've been doing it with their pitching yeah they pitched uh, three shutouts during this winning streak their bullpen has been lights out granted they're not doing it against the stiffest of competition all eight of these wins on the streak coming against uh, last place clubs but still they've got a number of hot hitters Lorenzo Cain is swinging it very well. Ryan Braun up over 400 for the last week. It'll be Chase Anderson, the Brewers opening day starter against Kyle Hendricks on the mound. Always fun when the Brewers and the Cubs get together and we'll have the series opener coming up next. Amazing. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois. Through it all. Ford, who invites you to go further in their fuel-efficient vehicles. Check out our entire lineup at your local Ford store or buyfordnow.com. And by Menards. Save big money at Menards. Nice night here at the ballpark. The Cubs have played a major league low seven games at home, but they are home for the next seven. Here's how the Brewers lineup looks on this Thursday evening. Kane, Yelich, and Braun at the top. Ryan Braun playing first base for the second time, the first time since the second game of the season. Shaw, Santana, and VR in the middle. Arcia, Jet Bandy, the catcher, and the pitcher Anderson rounding it out. 
How about we check out the Cubs defensively? You'll see an outfield alignment of Schwarber, Almora Jr., and Hayward left to right. Infield, Tommy LaStella at third base tonight. Chris Bryant still day to day. Addison Russell, Javier Baez up the middle. Anthony Rizzo made his first error in 150 ball games. Last night, he plays first. Victor Caratini gets a start behind the plate. And our Lexus experience amazing starting pitcher is Kyle Hendricks. He's out there for the fifth time. He picked up his first one of the year last time out. So one and one with a 409 for Kyle, making his 17th career start against Milwaukee. He is six and four lifetime against them with a 301. Your umpires tonight, Corey Blazer will work home plate. Stu Sherwater at first base. That's Eric Cooper at second and the crew chief Gary Cedarstrom with the cool glasses over at third. Yep, we're right on time, yep. Gary. Go time. He's the official starter. Milwaukee at 16 and 9, leading the division. Cubs at 11 and 10. Fourth place, three games back. Two balls and no strikes on Lorenzo Kane, Craig Council's club winners of eight in a row for the first time since 2015. There's the first strike of the ball game. It's two and one. They hit just a buck 83 against the Cubs in that four game series in Milwaukee. Swing and a miss, two and two. Great let up there by Hendricks. Kane has not seen a whole lot of Kyle. Uh, just six plate appearances for Lorenzo versus uh, Hendricks. And nothing for six so far. Top back to Hendricks. That's out number one. Here comes Christian Yelich. Spent time on the DL early in the season, including that Cubs series. Missed 12 games with an oblique injury. Boy, two huge acquisitions, Yelich and Kane. They made a trade to get Yelich. They signed Kane to a free agent deal. And they've both gotten off to good starts. Yeah, Yelich, uh, is a really polished hitter, gives you a tough AB. Doesn't chase many pitches out of the zone, uses the whole field. Hit for a lot of power, but you could see those numbers improving uh, in Milwaukee. Curveball strike, it's 0 and 2. You mentioned Kyle's career numbers against Milwaukee with the 3.01 ERA. That's basically what he's been against the whole league. His overall career earned run average 2.99. So next time one of the Brewers guys says he's always good against us we'll have to say that's what he does against yeah, everybody that's right. that's good against everybody no better against you than he is than any other team he's faced them a lot though two balls two strikes on Yelich. Hendricks again. Hey. That's, that's his game. He gets a lot of soft contact with late movement, moves the ball off the barrel, either in on the hands or down towards the end of the bat. See the change up grip and the pitch fading away off the outside corner below the knees. Beautiful pitch. Ryan Braun playing first base. Eric Thames is on the DL and going to miss. A fair amount of time. He's got a torn ligament in his left thumb. Braun started the first two games of the season at first base. And tonight will be his first game there since. And those were the first two games of his life at first base. Yeah, he played some in spring training. Uh, in, in, out in Arizona, he said he wasn't particularly comfortable playing the position. So it's a work in progress and with the addition of Yelich and Kane out, outfield at bats has gotten to be a bit of a challenge for Craig Council how it all shakes out. Now he grew up as a left side infielder shortstop and then third baseman. 
And he crunches one to deep left. Schwarber will play it off the wall. And actually, it'll be picked up by Almora. Hendricks gets a break as that ball missed a home run by a couple of feet. Two out double for Ryan Braun. Yeah, it, you know, Kyle's got a 409 ERA this year, which is a, you know, a good bit higher than uh, what he has posted in his career. And it's, you know, just the occasional mistake. An elevated pitch out over the middle of the plate. He's given up five home runs in 22 innings coming into the start. Uh, he's been mostly good, but you know, it's just, it seems like one big inning or a couple big swings of the bat have, have been his undoing. That brings up Travis Shaw. Comes in with a 919 OPS. Only Brewer to have appeared in every game. Let's see how close Braun was to a home run with the basket sticking out. Yeah, maybe maybe a foot. In the air center field it's Almora circling. Braun with the two out double no runs Cubs coming to bat when we return to Wrigley. He's averaging more at 6.17 going into action today. And they won. More on that later. Almora, Schwarber, and Baez. 1 2 3. Schwarber hitting second for the first time this year. Rizzo, Lestella, Caratini in the middle. Chris Bryant still day to day. Wilson Contreras getting the night off. Russell, Hayward, and Hendricks 7 through 9. Brewers defensively, they've committed 22 errors this year, tied for the most in the National League. It's a good group in the outfield with Yelich, Kane, and Santana. Third to first, Shaw, Arcia, VR, and Braun. As Len mentioned, just Braun's third start at first. Jet Bandy gets the catching assignment tonight, and our Lexus experience amazing starting pitcher for the Brewers is Robert Chase Anderson. He's making his sixth start. He's 2 and 1 with the 325. The leadoff man is presented by Benny's Beverage Depot. If Elmore gets a hit, Benny's Beverage Depot will donate $100 to the Greater Chicago Food Depository. Gotta read Benny's uh, maybe a little earlier than normal because Albert likes to swing early in the count. Yeah. And he's been largely successful at it since he jumped into the leadoff spot. He's a 400 on base percentage as a leadoff <laughs> man. Mostly because he's hitting for average. Anderson's a, he's a good one. He's got good command of the fastball, has an outstanding changeup. He's really neutralized left handed hitters so far this year. Toward third and foul. And we'd like to take a moment to welcome all our viewers watching and streaming the Cubs game on NBC Sports Chicago, on Ace and Tech, in Fayette County, Iowa. 
Nice night at the ballpark. I'm sure as the sun continues to go down, it'll get a little cooler, but this is uh, far better than what uh, we've experienced for the most part here in April. Look out. Kyle Schwarber had to duck out of the way as the barrel was helicoptering over his head. Check Twitter if there's a tweet that just has 15 consonants. Probably somebody sitting in the front row went, <laughs> Oh! <laughs> tweet that's Z D J F. Maybe we should have a, an on deck cage. Right. Look out. Breaking ball backed up on Anderson. Uh, I mentioned the changeup. He also throws a curveball and he'll cut his fastball. The changeup, though, is his best secondary pitch. This is a Curveball that he never really finished. Uh, but working a pretty good AB here. He's worked the count full. Ooh, nice that's lead a, off walk on a, a borderline pitch. Yeah, that's a that's a bottom of the knees outside corner 3-2 changeup from Anderson there. In the uh, Brewers high error total. Another stat I like to look at defensively is defensive efficiency. Baseball reference uh, ranks each team. And that is the percentage of balls in play converted into outs. The Brewers actually rate pretty highly among major league teams, even though they've committed all those errors. So if you look at the top teams right now, JD, yep. Cleveland, Houston, Arizona, Boston, <laughs> these are Teams who prevent runs. Yeah. Well, a lot of it is, you know, good pitching that induces weak contact yep. is turned into outs. But yeah, but if you've got uh, rangy position players, I really like the outfield here with Kane, Yelich, and Santana. RC is a good one at shortstop. VR can go get it. You can get a little sloppy sometimes. Talking to the Brewers people, they say Braun has, in the limited time they've seen him, played a good first base, even though he's still. Getting used to it. And Shaw at third base is, is solid. He made a costly error in the series up in Milwaukee between these two clubs, but overall he's a good solid defender. So Schwarber batting second tonight has hit second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth so far this season. And he's been on a good run here the last 10 days or so. Last couple of weeks had a good road trip. A couple of home runs in Cleveland the other night. Now Shaw was going to head over to the other side of the infield, and then somebody told him, "Nope." Yeah, so that's that's so that's that's the old alignment. They're shifting, they're like a football team. They're audibling. Cover two. Well, I'm back out of play. I see now directing traffic out there. Yeah, I think as a hitter, you, you have to make sure you disregard all that movement on the infield. You, it could get into your head a little bit if you think, well, what are they doing here? Are they moving around because they're going to pitch me a certain way? Are they going to go soft? They're going to throw me a heater in? You know, whatever it might be. And as a hitter, you just got to worry about the guy on the mound and not the, uh, the other guys behind him. But I, I, I suspect we'll see some teams start to change a little bit for Schwarber because he has shown a willingness lately to hit the ball to the left side. Good lead by Almora. Long pause at the set. Here's a one two and it's off the inside. Two balls, two strikes. Anderson making some quality pitches. He just missed the changeup to Almora. Now this two seam fastball, he's trying to run back to the inside corner. And that two just misses. Anderson was their opening day starter. And sixth assignment this year. 
2 2 has popped up. Shaw over into foul ground. And he one hands it. And we'll bring up Javier Baez. The National League with his 24 RBIs. He is slugging 898 against right handers this year. That leads all major league hitters. Runner at first, one out. Scoreless tie, bottom one. Fastball strike. Yeah, it will be inter interesting to see how Anderson goes after him because it is, he doesn't really have that wipeout slider. As I mentioned, he's been really good against lefties, far better against left handed hitters than righties. It would be justifiable to stack your lineup with right handed bats against this right handed pitcher. And we'll check on the runner, Al Mora. So 12 and 4 last year with a 274 ERA. Made 25 starts, spent some time on the DL with an oblique strain. It's fair to say, in the last uh, year plus, he's one of the more underrated starters in baseball. His last 42 starts, 19 and 6 with a 276. Yeah. And there's the splits I was talking about. Probably because of the, the good changeup. And maybe the lack of a put away breaking pitch against righties. Yeah, so yeah, 25 starts last year, 141 innings, a 274 ERA. So he didn't have enough innings to be listed among the uh, league leaders, but obviously would have been among them with that 274 ERA. Watch on Albert. I have to say, it just looks weird. Ryan Braun playing first base. So used to seeing him in a corner outfield spot. Pretty lonely existence out there in left or right field. Case of first, high in the air to right, Santana will grab it. Two down. Yeah, I would think uh, Brian Brown would like playing the infield here as opposed to being out left field where all the folks in the bleachers could razz him all night. They're not as comfortable playing first with a guy like Rizzo up there. And Anthony's errorless streak ending at 150 games last night. It covered a calendar year. It had been the longest such streak for a Cubs first baseman since at least 1910. And I think it would be hard pressed to find a guy prior to 1910 who had a streak like that since guys made 40, 50 errors yeah, a year. Yeah, errors were much more a part of the game back then. A lot of bad fields. So I think we can pretty safely say that is a. Club record for a first baseman. I see the shortstops way out in the right field grass. The VR playing near the bag. It was really a kind of a mental error last night too. Anthony made a throw to second base. with Lindor took an aggressive turnaround second, and Anthony fired the ball. It was an accurate throw, but nobody was there. You know, Addison wasn't there, so it obviously it was an error on Anthony. You know, it wasn't like a boot or not, not like the air mail to throw. One one pitch just got a piece of it. And, and the other part about it is you know, some guys <clears throat> will have low error totals because they don't try to make plays. He's always throwing the ball around the diamond. Uh, Steve Garvey famously um, you know, was a very good defender had great hands. 
but he didn't like to make throws. One play he'd come in aggressively charge it but would never make that throw to third base always would just turn and make the throw to first. There goes Elmora the pitch is high the throw is going to beat him. And that will end the Cubs first inning. Jet Bandy throws him out and we are scoreless after one. Ronald Acuna, three hits, first career homer. He and Ozzie Albies combined to knock in five, and the Braves win at Cincinnati. Gary Sanchez. Game ender to beat the Twins. Corey Dickerson, a 1 0 Pirates win, walk off homer in the ninth. About the Diamondbacks, they've won eight consecutive series, tying a National League record to start a season. And the Cardinals outlasted the Mets 4-3 and 13. The Cardinals now 15 and 9. Yeah, they're playing very good baseball right now. Pirates with their win 14 and 11. There's Domingo Santana off to a real slow start. Two for his last 23. I noticed his OPS a paltry 559 that ranks 175th among all big league hitters in on the hands that time Rizzo will get it to Hendricks. Are you ready for this. Yep. That OPS is still better than Jason Kipnis. Yasiel Pui. Chris Davis of the Orioles. Carlos Gomez and Brandon Crawford among others. So some pretty good hitters off to yeah. really slow starts. Sluggish. Sluggish. Well, Santana has not homered yet this year. You know another uh, baseball note uh, worth mentioning Johnny Venters returning to the big leagues uh, pitching for Tampa Bay last night. Uh, six years three Tommy John surgeries since he last appeared in the big league. So welcome back Johnny. Uh, it'd be great to see him go on and have a. A good little run here at the big league level. And, uh, back in the day he came up with Atlanta. He and uh, Craig Kimbrell came up together. Inventor stuff might have been nastier than Kimbrell's. So good he was. I also want to pass along condolences to former Cubs manager and current White Sox skipper Ricky Renteria. His mom Angela has passed away at age 91. And he will be attending the services in Texas this weekend. BR grounds to Rizzo.
Cubs have 25 players and millions of teammates. And they need everyone at the top of their game screaming, go Cubs, go, because when everybody's in, from the grandstands to the bleachers, everybody on the field takes notice. Tickets available, Cubs.com. There's been two tappers back to the mound and two to first base. You get a little Eddie Fainer working here. <laughs> Two man Garcia. game. Looks at ball one. Recently dealt with a, an ankle issue and then the stomach flu. One oh pitch from Kyle is a strike. Here's a one one. Perfectly placed 87 on the fastball outside corner. The professor looks uh, pretty well dialed in here tonight save for that one pitch to Braun. He's been hitting his spots. Toward the alley. A little one hop the wall. And just like the first inning, he got two ground ball outs and then a two out double. Yeah, and obviously he's not trying to give up two out doubles, but I think, you know, what, what Kyle's doing, what a lot of guys do, is when you got two outs, nobody on base, you don't want to walk anybody. So, in certain situations, you're willing to be a little bit more aggressive. Try to get the boys off the field and back into the dugout. And then, you know, now with the man in scoring position, his approach will change a little bit and become probably a little bit less aggressive, even though Bandy's the eight hole hitter. He's got the pitcher on deck. And he threw out Almora trying to steal, and making a team high 13th start behind the plate. And he might have been the odd man out in spring training. And Stephen Vogt. Not started the year on the DL with a shoulder issue. Manny Pena just came back from the DL a couple of days ago as well. Inside for a ball. So their main first baseman's out. Their closers on the DL. Arguably their top starter, Jimmy Nelson, also injured. Yelich missed a dozen games, and here they are in first place. And uh, Speaking of closers, Andrew Miller left the game last night after two pitches against the Cubs. He's gone to the DL with the uh, hamstring. We talk about it all throughout spring training and, and early in the season. It's it's you know, organizational depth is so important to be able to bring guys up from Triple A to plug in. So there you see their injury report. And some real key pieces are out. But they still won eight in a row. I think, and this is kind of probably weird, and I doubt that Craig Council or most of the, the Brewer folks would agree with me. I think the Canable injury is actually going to help them. I think the way he's used his bullpen with Barnes and Hader and Albers and others working the ninth inning, working more high leverage situations. I think they're going to be that much better once they get Knable back and he has multiple options. Now, how he chooses to manage, I'm not sure, but um, they, their bullpen has been a real strength even without Knable. Kyle's run it full. The pitcher's on deck. Anderson, not known for his bat. Career 096. But then again, you've got a, an eight hitter batting 195. So, yeah, and I think Kyle's going through the same thing you're going through in your mind, trying to decide what to do here, how aggressive to be. That's why he stepped off and wants to reconsider the uh, pitch selection. But this, for me, and I, I think for most pitchers, this early in the game, you got an eight hole hitter up there. 
Get him out. Get him out. Have yeah. the pitcher leading up the next inning. Perfect. That'll work. They called third. Mask wearing union, not an agreement. So they strand. Pay your dues, young man. Second for the second straight inning. Cubs MasterCard debit card only available at your local Wintrust Community Bank. Go to Wintrust.com slash Cubs to learn more. Members FDIC. Anthony Rizzo was at the plate. And Albert Almora was caught stealing to end the first inning, so reset the count. Quirks of our great game. I have to wonder in the very early days of baseball if they considered carrying over runners in innings. Was it just a given you had to start over? The arm makes the catch, right? The three outs. So bases three outs and guy in second, and then you start the next inning with a man on. I don't know. I mean, do we just take for granted that it was assumed uh, he had a clean slate? I've not heard otherwise. And, and and how about the idea of that, like Almora getting caught stealing there while Anthony's batting? Is there a chance that way back in the day that you would lose your turn at bat? Maybe. And Stella earning a lot of playing time here lately. Chris Bryant still day to day after being being hit. By a pitch in the helmet on Sunday in Colorado, fourth consecutive start for Tommy. And a ground ball charged by Garcia. Xfinity X1 customers say, Show me the Chicago Cubs into your X1 voice remote and get live team stats on your TV. Change the way you experience TV with Xfinity X1. Two outs, it's switch hitting Victor Caratini getting the start back of the plate. Wilson Contreras brought out the lineup card tonight. No strikes. I 
I think like, uh, Joe likes pairing Caratini with Hendricks. One of he, Kyle's easy to catch because he's always around the plate. He's very reliable and he controls the running game so well. That one thumped into center. Scrambling out of the way was Eric Cooper. Cubs have their first hit tonight. Eric wasn't sure which way to go there for a moment. <laughs> Got hit by this one. This ball really scalded by Victor. Top hand comes flying through there. Addison Russell with a man on and two outs. He wanted to have some fun, maybe in uh, Florida or something in the offseason, get a bunch of guys together, play a little pickup game of baseball. Have one team get 27 outs. Right? Three at a time, like you typically would, and then the other team bats for 27 outs. Right? Hey guys, we're down five nothing. We got 27 outs to score six. Instead of alternate, just hit the whole time. No. Yeah. Sure. Mix it up a little bit. Yeah. Well, and I hate to be one of those old guys, back in the day, kind of guys. But you know, when we were kids, it's, you know, all kinds of sandlot games, and if you didn't mm -hmm. have enough guys, you had to kind of. Change the rules and you had to call your field or whatever. Right. Yeah, with one or two outfielders, so play all the right or left. Pitcher's hand, we played that. Mm -hmm. Well, it looked good. It'll be a hit for Russell. And they are with an acrobatic play to keep it out of center field. He's got some top spin, a little extra juice as it bounces through that infield. Yeah, pretty play, but no play to be had there for VR. Uh, NFL draft night. Yeah, looks like a running back or, tumbling over the yeah, or, or, or into the end zone. Or somebody jumping out of a moving car to get away from the bad guys. <laughs> Back to back two out hits. Jason Hayward hit 375 on the just completed trip. Caratini got his hand back in safely. Well, two outs. Uh, Victor, not a speedy guy. He has to make sure he gets a good secondary lead here so he can score on a base hit. We are out there in short right field. I'm told via Twitter that I just described 2020 cricket. So maybe there's some form of cricket where they bat all day. Yeah. Well, I know that I know the game itself can last for days. The match. Maybe one day you'll be able to turn four and you'll get an out in the next inning. Anderson now to the plate. Inside, it's a ball and a strike. Yeah, VR man, he's out there bouncing around as the pitch is being delivered. Feeling a little frisky. Stab. Nice play. And a guy who hasn't done it a whole lot over there at first. Cubs strand a couple. And I envision the Cubs would have two men on in the third. Not the case.
tonight's game. Nothing, nothing. So I don't watch the NBA like I used to. But I watched LeBron's block and I thought, didn't that used to be goaltending? And I'm told that yeah, the NBA, the NBA yeah. admitted that it should have been. Should have been missed a call. It's all a big conspiracy. They should have asked me. Mindy Rudolph would have got it right. Now Hendricks back to work. I used to blow the whistle a little bit. A little high school referee yeah. back in the day. Yeah. And then when I was a minor leaguer, make a few bucks in the offseason. Waiting on television here. Not us. We see Bob Costas and Jim Cott They're calling the game nationally tonight. So it's pitcher against pitcher here in the third inning. Yeah. some fouls into the screen above the visitors dugout. And it's much more aggressive here with the, the opposing pitcher up there. Center cut heaters to get started. Kyle work 86 to 88. Sinkers mostly occasional elevated four seam fastball. One of the better change ups in the game. And struck him out. Back to back K's. Randy to end the second. And Anderson to start the third. Uh, Saturday the 28th Cubs Brewers first pitch 120 and up to the first 10,000 early arriving fans receive a dancing bullpen tumbler presented by Pepsi tickets are still available for this game Cubs.com is a great place to go to get your tickets. You come on Saturday you'll see Jose Quintana pitch against Junior Guerra. One strike to Kane. Walk rate of 15 percent. That's double what his uh, career number is. It's early. He doesn't strike out a ton. Yeah, he hasn't uh, batted leadoff. He hadn't in the last two or three years in Kansas City. He, earlier in his career, he did. But he's really embraced this role here. Being much more patient, taking his walks. Turned to Kansas City uh, the other day, hit a big home run. Stella beats Kane. All right, here's the challenge for Kyle. That's the first two outs, like he did in the first and the second. But, uh, two out doubles by Braun and Arcia. Here's Yelich. I'm not saying the Brewers are a paper tiger because I, I think they are a good club. But mentioned in the open this eight game winning streak coming against all last place clubs. They played a fairly soft schedule so far. Uh, they're 11 and one against teams that are currently in last place. Padres Reds Marlins Royals. They're five and eight against Cubs Cardinals and Mets. Well, you you can win a lot of ball games if you quote beat the teams you're supposed to beat. There's the two one. So Hendricks this time goes one two three. Bottom three. Nothing nothing.
Chance to win an Alaskan cruise for two, six each Thursday only at Potawatomi. Learn more at PaysBig.com. Now Hendricks will bat. Leading off the Cubs third. One for eight so far this year. Four against Milwaukee. Rockies come in for three starting Monday. Anderson fires. It's outside. Cutter, you'll see that 88 89 fastball 91 to 93 for the most part. Both these guys just really good tacticians. They know how to they know how to pitch, move the ball around. Good curve. One and two. Anderson, 30 years of age now, originally a Diamondback. Traded here in 2016, the uh, deal that sent Gene Segura out to the desert. Just some time with an oblique strain last year following the season. Got a two year deal plus two club options. So they can control his. Contract through 2021. And he's gone full on the pitcher. A fly ball to right. This is Domingo Santana. Hey, this Sunday, April 29th, Cubs host the Brewers in the series finale at 120. Up to the first 10,000 early arriving adults, age 21 and older, receive a Cubs slouch beamy presented by Jim Beam. Tickets are still available for that game at Cubs.com. Amora walked and was caught stealing in the first inning. He's got a career best eight game hitting streak. Swing and a miss. Yeah, he likes to attack that first pitch and uh, pretty good at handling the fastball. So you see a lot of guys start him. Oh, oh, breaking ball. Backhanded play, Arcia. Oh. It's pretty slick over there. <laughs> So many good young shortstops in the in the game. Sometimes Arcia gets a loss in the shuffle a little bit, but yeah, he's got a bright future. Is he 22-23? Schwarber fouled out in the first inning. Yeah, Arcia is 23. A different look to the lineup tonight with Schwarber batting second, Baez third, no Bryant, no Contreras. Fouled out of play. 0 and 2 on Schwarber. Cubs didn't get much done offensively last night in Cleveland against Trevor Bauer, who threw the ball very well. Yeah, he and John Lester lived up to their billing. John gave up three solo home runs and took the loss. On will beat Kyle to the bag. Cubs go one, two, three for the first time. Tonight, Brewers bat in the fourth in a nothing, nothing tie.
Jeff Vukovic. Go to jeffvuk.com or follow him on social media. Nationwide is on your side. One of our Cubs insiders is Doug Glanville, and we'll chat with him coming up in a couple of innings. Nothing, nothing. Brewers will bat. And in the fourth, Cubs beat them three out of four at Miller Park earlier. At the end of the season series, we have seen 19 games between these contenders. Brewers won the season series last year, mm. 10 to 9. They were a 6 and 3 here at Wrigley. They won four in a row in this ballpark. Down with a double and a nice defensive play at first. And then he takes a strike. Yeah, it was a good opportunity, too. Cubs had first and second with two outs. Hayward hit this ball sharply down the first baseline. And the old third baseman leaving his feet to make a play. This is his 158th career game against the Cubs. He's had about 330 against them. In his career. 341. Lifetime at Wrigley. 100 hits. 15 home runs. 7 out of 20. Safe well make it an 8 out of 27 now against Kyle. Swing and a miss, strike three. <laughs> the, the, the best reaction, Kyle, because he missed his spot. He was really frustrated. He's trying to throw a down and away change up, and this thing floats up and in, but he still gets a swing and miss from Brown. Look at Kyle's reaction. He's like, oh man, did I get away with one? <laughs> well, it was so bad it was good. <laughs> <laughs> just love the the commitment to, to being precise right I mean you got a big a punch out of a very dangerous hitter but uh, clearly not happy with the pitch he made one and one to Shaw. Wind in the pitch, hit on the ground. Rizzo will scoop, spin, fire one to Hendricks. Third time uh, we've seen the first base to Hendricks covering put out in this game. Seven outs on the ground so far for Kyle. Santana 0 for 1. Two balls, no strikes. And the Brewers right fielder. Couldn't get it, neither could Baez on the dive. And Javi getting up slowly. Remember about that left wrist or something on the dive. Hmm. Looks like he's all right. Another hits coming with two outs, three of them. Yeah. Rolled under a little bit. Yeah. Switch hitting VR. A 
Milwaukee off to the 16 and 9 start tied for the third best 25 game start in their history. An 87 team streak. Up to 20 and 5 over their first 25. Throw to second in town. One to three to six. To end the threat, the Bears have selected Roquan Smith, the linebacker from Georgia, eighth overall pick in the draft. Lawrence Holmes and Alex Brown will grade the pick. Analysis Brewers and Cubs a scoreless tie home team batting three four five in the fourth Baez takes ball one from Chase Anderson that's a good pick the Bears made he's you like a, that one he's huh? a very physical player he can get upfield one and one. I found that interesting in the analysis of football. Now it says it's a very physical team. Well, how could you not be physical when you play football? Right. That was a strange play, and Braun can't get him. Boy, that ball went right off the end of the bat. It had some English on it, and Braun with a diving stop, but he just could not feed it to Anderson in time. That's an infield hit. Any which way you can. This one right off the end of the bat, a little gyro ball. This looks like Braun was kind of on top of that one a little bit, a little bit awkward as he kind of came out of his belly flop trying to make that flip. You know, he almost overplayed it. And everything had to be just right to make it close at first base. And even with that, I think Baez beats it. Baez now has a career best nine game hitting streak. So leadoff man. Is on for the second time. Rizzo, the batter. Popped him up. VR will go out into the grass. We're out number one. All right, Anderson off. Here we go. Ready? Oh, okay. Yep. Sparky. Larry. Brady. Um, Larry, there was two. No, what? Bud, Larry, Bud Anderson was a pitcher. Okay. With o N, and then our Larry right. Anderson, the, uh, our colleague with the Phillies, is S E N. 
Anderson Hernandez. Ooh, I, I like get extra it. credit for yeah, that one. Yeah. Come on, the Southside fans watching us tonight. Oh, Tim Anderson. Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. The guy we just saw in Colorado. I'll do it. Tyler Anderson. Tyler Anderson. We could, we could go for a while. We could go Tamara Anderson, our associate producer. Mm -hmm. Got to find her on baseball reference first. Yeah, well, we could go on and on forever. There's a lot of Andersons in baseball history. Garrett. Garrett, that's what I was thinking. About. Brett, the former Cub. Two down. Are you looking at a list? I am now. Oh. <laughs> Doug Glanville coming up. We, could have, we should have invited Doug into our Anderson on. Right. <laughs> <laughs> He's got an Anderson we haven't mentioned yet. I have a feeling. Yeah. Well, did you say Marlon? Marlon Anderson. Oh, Marlon Anderson. Anderson. That's good. Yeah, cool. yeah Marlon. Uh -huh. One time teammate in Philadelphia. Uh, Philly, yeah. Yeah. We could name about seven Brian Andersons. <laughs> right. Outfielder, third baseman, pitcher, broadcaster. Broadcaster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Two outs. Here's Caratini. Louis Anderson. <laughs> Power hitter. Baez started the inning with an infield hit. Rizzo popped to VR. Estella applied to Kane. Decent lead by Javi at first, and they've got him picked up. Doesn't mean he's going to be out though. And he'll be tagged by Arcia. Doug Glanville will have his analysis when we return. Nothing, nothing after four. is inducing weak contact a lot of that leads to ground balls after ground balls this is the Kyle Hendricks the Cubs need that weak contact a lot of late movement keeping the hitters off balance they're getting jammed and they're keeping the ball on the ground this is where Kyle H Hendricks thrives earlier we've seen a lot of home runs have bitten him and now this game where he's actually changing speeds using his late breaking movement to make sure the hitters are off balance and keeping the ball on the ground. That's his bread and butter. And uh, early on, we've seen left-handed hitters. When Kyle's behind in the count, the home runs have really caught up to him. So this is a positive sign where he's really made some adjustments off of these Brewers hitters and keeping the ball on the ground. 
Thanks, Doug. Yeah, the, the home run thing, uh, JD. Man, it's it's that's not his game. I no, mean, he's, he's had a couple. Of he's them. had a couple games that, that have looked a lot like this one uh, to this point in the game, and then there's a couple of mistakes in the mid innings. So I'll made a couple of pitches and boom, boom. Um, you know, a certain amount of that can be just luck. Um, you, you know, when you look at a guy's you know, home run to fly ball ratio, I mean, there, there are going to be balls hit in the air, and you know, and plus, you know, with all the talk last year and this about the ball being juiced. Balls that otherwise might stay in the ballpark, I think, fly out of the yard. But um, he just rarely throws the ball in the middle of the strike zone. Yeah, he doesn't. Um, Doug, as a hitter, I wanted to ask you about Kyle. With all the velocity we're seeing, do you, do you think that is kind of a, an exploitation of the market, so to speak? A guy throwing 86, 87. Yeah, and he has success because of his movement and his location. But with that velocity, you have to be very precise to stay out of that hitter's zone because he doesn't have the luxury of making mistakes with high velocity and getting away with it. And so when you see him struggling, you see a lot of his off-speed pitches, the multiple changes Ooh. living up in the zone. That was a great one right there to get VR. Yeah, perfect example. And, and so when he's living on the top of the zone, that's where the damage happens. So you see here, when he gets on top of that ball, watch that leap movement. Once the hitter commits, the ball sinks down in the zone. And Hendricks has multiple change-ups, some of which ride away from lefties, some which sort of fade. And, and that's very tough as a hitter to adjust to because he understands exactly how to use those different off-speed pitches. Uh, in your career, you know, who's a comp that you would have faced uh, like like Kyle? Who, who would you? Oh, he's, he's, he's a Greg Maddox, Maddox style, and I know that's a, <laughs> a high bar, but you, you, you see the similarities, the late movement where a hitter either gives up on the ball and it comes back, or he commits early and it disappears out of the zone. He kind of keeps you in that rocking chair. And that, that was kind of a loaded question in there to get another ground ball because I got a follow up for you. <laughs> so when facing Greg Maddox, what, what would have been your approach going into a, a Maddox game? I mean, I, I jumped on pitches early and often, even though that made his pitch count 70 pitches through nine innings. But <laughs> I tried to get him early and I, I hit him OK, but I did very little damage. He's not worried about the singles. He's just trying to and he's not worried about the strikeouts. And that's sort of Hendricks's style. Like, Induce weak contact. Use your fielders. They have an excellent defense behind them. So that that's sort of the you know the trickery that really makes you feel like when you hit against these guys, you're like, well, I don't feel bad, but I'm 0 for 5. What happened? <laughs> yeah, or uh, one for four with a single, and, and then uh, the guy behind me hit into a double play. Right. right. Multiple broken bats. And yeah. that one trick that Maddox played on me, I used to look down when I let off the game, and uh, you know I did it every at bat. Go ahead, you can finish, Doug. And uh, he, he quick pitched me once while my head was down. Oh, <laughs> Strike one. Yeah, good stuff. <laughs> Thanks, Doug. Our Cubs insider, Doug Glanville, as Hendricks right on cue. Works a one, two, three, fifth.
tonight. Join Lawrence Holmes, Alex Brown, and Hub Arkish as they break down tonight's big pick and what you could see in the future rounds. NFL Draft Central recap show tonight at 11. Must be cold. Our lips are blue. <laughs> We have a pitcher's duel here at Wrigley Field. At least through four and a half. Six hits combined. Here's with a couple of two out doubles. Kyle Hendricks hasn't allowed more than one base runner in any inning. Also been three outs made on the bases. Mm -hmm. Almora and Baez caught stealing for the Cubs Santana. For the Brewers. Yeah, and that's what happens when when you when you've got two guys on the mound that are both executing the way these two guys are. And the managers start thinking, all right, I got to find a way to generate some offense or we'll take some chances on the bases. So far, it hasn't worked out. Two and zero oh on Caratini, who singled in the second. Sharply hit grounder. Arcia up with it. The throw is late. Victor's two for two. Caratini saying, "Man, I had to run really hard. I thought that was an easy yeah, base hit." Yeah, great range, and uh, Arcia quickly to his feet, steams his throw across the diamond. Caratini selling out, has himself a knock, two for two tonight for Victor. Making the most of his opportunity. Russell singled in the second. He had a slow road trip, three out of 19. He had an allergic reaction to some uh, food in Denver. But, uh, did not miss a beat. The Cubs fortunately had an off day the following day. A couple good swings the other day in Cleveland, including a double into the right center field alley. That was a good hack right there. So maybe just starting to show some signs. Timing's been a little out of sync. Not a big lead by Caratini. Here's the pitch. Bunted and popped up behind the plate. Bandy makes the grab. That's that's struggling hitter trying to do something to help con contribute right there. Start your summer music adventures off right with the Budweiser concert series here at Gallagher Way. First show is Friday, May 18th, and will feature the record company on the left and real estate there on your right. To purchase tickets and more information. Visit GallagherWay.com slash events. What I love when we take a peek out there in the middle of a game is the, the kids playing pickle or whatever. Mm -hmm. Reminds me of being a kid. You know, yeah. you've got a game on in the background and you're running around doing your thing. Yeah, yeah. Nothing better. Hayward in the air. Center field. Kane takes a look back and he will not even get to the warning track. Two down. It looked and sounded more promising uh, off the crack of the bat. Kind of has that angle of attack where it's down and through, and sometimes that backspin, which you know, so many hitters talk about backspin getting carry. I think there's a point where you get so much backspin where you, where you lose carry. I'm not a physicist. Matter of fact, I dropped but physics my senior year in high school. You just played one on TV. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was not my strong suit either. Two and zero on Hendricks. He flied to right in the third. But getting back to the Russell Bond, that you know that. It didn't look like he was bunting for a hit, and I highly doubt that Joe would have asked him to bunt in that situation. So, to me, that just looked like a struggling guy's like, 
Oh man, I had to pitch it here to foul it off. I'm going to do something here to try to help my club and move that guy along. That's why you have to, when you, when you evaluate the game, you could talk about, you know, and, and there's a big school of thought that you know, the sacrifice button is a bad play, and I tend to agree with that more times than not. But sometimes the player's just not seeing it well, not feeling good. He thinks this is the only way I'm going to contribute in this at bat. Kyle worked a deep count his first time up. Now two and two. And we got him looking. That is his first strikeout tonight. Gallagher Way. Out there playing catch. Watching the Cubs. Nothing, nothing. Like the Dell EMC Legends Suite, which includes an all inclusive suite experience. And best of all, a visit from a former Cubs player. Visit Cubs.com slash premier for an option that fits your needs. We have played five innings tonight of scoreless baseball. The uh, Indians, the team we just saw, lost tonight, starting a four gamer against the Mariners, Seattle, a 5 4. Winner. Nine, one, and two for Milwaukee. Nice crowd tonight, and we'll be playing in the afternoon the rest of the weekend. Strike called on Anderson. Couldn't get chase to chase. Somebody's having a birthday here at the ballpark. Mm -hmm. Team ending double for Dexter Fowler today. In the 13th inning. Well, this one ought to be pretty close to the Whoopi Goldberg square, I would think. <laughs> Two and one with pitcher up there. A couple of bounces to Estella. And he got him. Wow. 
Thought that ball might have hit Anderson. Yeah, there's a whole it lot did, going on actually, there all at once. Yeah. Rizzo caught it too. And Brewers are taking a look uh, at the replay here. You can see Anthony saying that the ball kind of tailed on him. Anderson thinks that maybe he's safe. Brewers are reviewing the video. We'll do the same. Maybe a little extra step there for Tommy. Looks like he got out of sync a little bit with his footwork. I think that the ball good. clipped him and then was caught by Rizzo. Oh, let's see. Craig Council is going to challenge. Oh, he caught it. It just passed right in front of Anderson. Anthony basically. I'm looking at the ball. Screen. See if he's out. The throw beat him. Through, throw beat him. If, Anthony, if Anthony's on the bag, he's out. Okay. I think he was. Well, look at his feet. So boom, you see that? You see the mitt? You yeah. see the ball in the back of the mitt? Yep, I got it. Oh, that's out. a good look. Yep. <clears throat> Fortunate nobody got hurt. That's you know it's not a terrible challenge uh, even if they don't get it to go their way. We're in the sixth. To be a leadoff base runner with the top of the order coming up. I'm just wondering what they saw in the in the Brewer video yeah. review room that you know led them to challenge us because right there that looks pretty obvious. I'm, and I, but I, again, I'm surprised the umpires are taking as long as they are, given what we've seen. Craig Council loses his challenge, but really that only matters for the next couple of innings. Council issued an appeal, and he was denied. <laughs> you lodge a challenge and issue an appeal? Is that what we determined? He's the lead council. If Aaron Judge were a brewer, I don't want to think about that. That would not be good for the Cubs. Oh, I'm already digging on the whole Kane, Kane and Knable thing. The Brewers. <laughs> Two strikes on Lorenzo Kane. David Justice. Uh, Anthony telling Tommy that he stinks. Side that time 88 on the fastball about as hot as you'll see that heater from Kyle occasionally will hit 89 or 90 generally sits 86 to 88. Kane's been wearing out left handed pitching this year batting 435 against Southpaws 4 246 against right handed pitching coming into this ball game tonight. Driven to deep center. Almora is back on the track. He's got it. Doesn't matter if he's home or on the road. He just keeps doing that. I love Hendricks reaction. This ball carried a little further than I anticipated. Albert keeps a steady eye on it, tracks it all the way to the warning track just in front of the ivy. And more importantly, just in front of the brick wall. Kane, I'm sure, didn't like it, but he had to certainly appreciate it. Well, maybe not. Yelich with two outs. That was fairly routine but, uh, compared to what we saw from Albert in Colorado. Yeah. 
One and one. I mentioned uh, De Dexter Fowler, 13th inning uh, single, won the game. 4 3 over the Mets. Fowler hitting in six different spots in their lineup in the last six games. Just keeps moving around. We'll be in St. Louis next weekend. Three balls and a strike. Yeah, we go to St. Louis and come right back home for another couple of series. So comes in a stretch of games here where they had a chance to make some hay at home and been a, a sputtering club so far this year. Still looking for their first three-game winning streak. Been at 500, game above, a game below. Swing and a miss. Changed him up. Got some help from Albert Almora, and he'll lead it off when we come back. Moment. Albert Almora Jr. flashing some more leather. And that's a tough ball, too, when it's directly over the, the center fielder's head like that, where he doesn't have a real good angle. He'll stop before he crashed into the bricks. And because of that, we're going to let him bat first here in the bottom of the sixth. It's only fair. He takes a strike. And they're batting 305 on the year. Can you believe, JD, we are four weeks into the major league season? That's right. It was uh, Thursday yeah, in Miami when we started. Yeah. And the Cubs have only played 21 games. And it's all said and done. We'll get 162 in. Now Schwarber. Anthony Rizzo made headlines last week by saying he'd be open to 
dropping a few games off the schedule. It could happen down the road. Well, and the commissioner was asked about it. And he said, well, yeah, the players would have to make some concessions in terms of you know, salary, right? Because got the schedule, you're chopping a lot of revenue away from the clubs. Schedule used to be 154. Added eight to that. That's four home games per team. One idea was to make the division round the best of seven. Schwarber golfs that one out of here. One to nothing in the sixth. Go ahead, boys. Get your dance on. That Luke Farrell? That was the newcomer. <laughs> that looked very much like the home run he hit in uh, Cleveland the other night. The old one iron, that one was 117 miles per hour. This one, uh, 109. Head down, hands through. See you later, number seven. For the loss last night, John Lester with maybe the quote of the year. He said, Whoever told you solo homes, home runs can't beat you is full of a four letter word. And maybe that's all it will take tonight. One and one to Baez. Yeah, and not ho all home runs come on bad pitches. You know, sometimes you make a pretty good pitch, and you just have to tip your cap to the hitter because uh, he's able to inflict some damage on it. That's certainly the case last night. The Encarnacion home run that he hit off Lester was well down below the knees. A one two pitch outside for a ball. Two and two. Seventh home run for Schwarber ties him with Javi for the club lead. Nice to have these guys swinging hot bats with, with uh, KB out of the lineup and Anthony struggling. Two coming home is popped way up in the air near third base. And Shaw's got it. Whether the Cubs are home or on the road, guided tours of legendary Wrigley Field are available. Tours include visits in various seating areas, the press box, dugouts, as well as a chance to actually step on the field. This must see Chicago attraction houses over 100 years of history. Book your tour at Cubs. Dot com slash tours. Way just outside. Anderson hails from Wichita Falls, Texas. Three no hitters in his senior year, pitching for Ryder High School. Then went on to North Central Texas College and the University of Oklahoma. Ball 
ball left field. Yelich coming over, and he'll make the grab in fair territory. Cubs are on the board. Kyle Schwarber with number seven on the season. And as Satchel Page once said, dance like nobody's watching. Luke Farrell takes that to heart. Wrigley Field, well, check out all the available transportation and parking options. The Cubs offer a free bike check that's located by the Addison Red Line station. If you drive, the Cubs provide free remote parking and shuttle service on night and weekend games. For information, visit the A to Z guide at Cubs.com. Three, four, five. It's been the, it's, it's been the Kyles tonight. Hendricks on the mound and Schwarber with one swing of the bat. Hit Oop. hard foul. Yeah, got away with one there. Change up over the heart of the plate and up. Old adage in baseball is win the seventh, win the ball game. Well, it's two misses. He's not had to pay for it. I'm well, mixing a couple curveballs earlier in the ball game, but it mostly fastball changeups. Side one and two win, not much of a factor tonight. Southeast breeze at four, so kind of blowing out toward left or the right to left action. Very pleasant temperatures in the low 60s, upper 50s tonight. Seasonally appropriate, I would say. Shaw on deck. 2 2 on Ryan Braun. He's playing first base tonight. And he lines one, and it's caught by Baez. He just grabbed Braun of a hit. Well, nope. Brian Butterfield had him well positioned to begin with, and then a beautiful play as Baez climbs the ladder. Snagged that line drive.
Good dismount. Bias plays deep against the left handed hitting Shaw. Straight up in the outfield. The pitch is low. Tonight's take brought to you by AARP. Shaw against Kyle Hendricks. Three of his five hits have been home runs. Uh, he got him in the game in Milwaukee earlier this year, I believe. He gave up a couple of home runs in that start. Got a no decision. The Brewers went on to win that ball game. It was their only win in that four game set. He's going to 3 0 on him. He took that change up like he knew it was coming. John Lester last night, first Cubs starter to get through seven innings. Second Cubs pitcher to do it. Eddie Butler in relief in the 17 inning game in Miami. 3 and 1. Baez to Rizzo to oh, go. That was tricky. He was playing deep, so he had to come in on it and got, had to deal with a little bit of an in between hop there. So the spring in the legs got him the first play, and here the good hands. He starts low and comes up. Ball into center. His second hit, both singles. You gonna make a Santana joke? Uh, second no. hit, both singles. <laughs> no, but I think you just did. Put it up on a tee for you. VR the switch hitting second baseman 0 for 2. Mm -hmm. Caught trying to steal last time he, he was trying to anticipate first move and went well before first move and Hendricks made the throw to first and Anthony over the second base to make the play on him. They are having a pretty good year with the bat after a down year last year. Two years ago, he was outstanding. Santana runs, and he's going to make it. Head first on the slide. So he's one for two tonight. And Caratini throws okay, but he doesn't have uh, the arm that Contreras has, and this throw was high, and it would have been a close play if the ball was down right on the bag. But by the time Madison's able to grab it and apply the tag, Santana in safely. Brewers have uh, 16 steals. Above average, but not quite at the level they used to. The Nationals lead the majors with 29 steals. 1 1 fouled off. Maybe Veteran. Martinez has got the boys running, huh? Yep. Pedro Strope is up for the Cubs. Well, and we've got a one run game here and one and two count with two outs and a man in scoring position and uh, makes sense to have a little chat at the mound and make sure they're on the same page with how they want to get VR maybe even change up the, the signs a little bit. I think it was more of a discussion of uh, how to finish out VR here. 
285 two years ago with a 369 on base percentage last year batted 241 with a 293. Perhaps setting himself up to be a contender for comeback player of the year. I don't think mm -hmm. they gave an award for most regressed player. Perhaps would have been a candidate for that last year after leading the league in stolen bases two years ago with 62. With his struggles, especially early last year, VR saw his playing time dwindle a little bit. Ground right to Baez. Time for the seventh inning stretch brought to you by St. Xavier University. For this evening stretch, please direct your attention to the outfield video boards. All right. Fun at the old ballpark tonight. Nice night here in Chicago. Cubs lead 1-0. Tommy Lestella, bottom seven. Against Chase Anderson. Knocked down VR, and he will have time. That changeup was elevated, but Anderson got away with it. Lestella's 0 for 3. Sharply hit. Um, you know, after the game last night, Joe Madden said uh, their home runs went fair and ours went foul, including Stella hit a rocket down the right field line that had home run distance, but curled foul. And, uh, tonight, Schwarber hit one into the seats and go back to the ball. Braun hit his first time up. He hit that double just below the basket and left. Caratini two for two takes strike one back at it tomorrow afternoon and you Darvish face lefty Brent Suter and NBC Sports Chicago we will have Sunday's game right here as well and the final three games all starting at 120. Good sell job by Victor there. 
One and two. Base hit to center. One and one into the shortstop hole. He's very good at going the other way. Swing and a miss on the change for strike three. Watch every out of market regular season game live at home in the office or on the go with MLB.tv. Your subscription includes MLB at bat premium, allowing you to watch live baseball on your favorite supported devices. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. This is officially Anderson's longest outing so far. Six and two thirds. A strike to Russell. And the same goes for Kyle Hendricks. Popped up. So Anderson makes quick work in the seventh. To the eighth. Cubs one, Milwaukee nothing. Takes on Brent Suter in game two of the Brewers Cubs series. Coverage begins at 12.30 with Cubs pregame live. Or if you are at work, you can stream the game live on the NBC Sports app. Just don't tell your boss. <laughs> Into the bullpen and a new battery. Wilson Contreras will take over behind the plate and hit in the ninth spot. Hard throwing Carl Edwards Jr. 20 strikeouts in under 11 innings. And you like just four walks. That's a good ratio. Yeah, absolutely. And we've got uh, two of the better strikeout guys in the league in this series coming out of the bullpen uh, Edwards Jr. for the Cubs and uh, Josh Hader for the Brewers. These guys have been dominating here in the early going. Kyle Hendricks, seven innings, four hits, no runs, no walks. Five strikeouts. He did not pitch with multiple runners on base all night. Marcia <laughs> backed out of the way, <laughs> lost his helmet in the process. And was that him? Was that the I think it was. Yeah. It was anticipating one on the ribs. <laughs> with Edwards, a right handed hitter is expecting everything to be moving away with that cutting fastball that he throws. Foul pop out of play. 37,197 here tonight. Eleven ground ball outs for Hendricks tonight. A couple of hard hit balls, but not much. Top of his game here this evening. That was fun to watch. Fly ball pretty well hit, but Schwarber will make the grab out in deep left. A 
I've talked to some relief pitchers um, about situations like this. I mean, anytime you're pitching in a tight game late, it's, you know, it's a high leverage, high intensity situation. But some guys really feel it when they come in behind a guy who was pitched as well as Hendricks. You know, that mindset, I don't want to, this guy's pitched a gem, and I don't want to be responsible for letting that get away. A little different feel uh, as opposed to an eight to seven one run game. Mm -hmm. Bandy takes ball one. Jesus Aguilar on deck to hit for Anderson, and that's Jacob Barnes. One and one. CJ. Fast pitch of the game presented by Xfinity, America's best internet service provider. Mid 90s with some natural cutting action. Brewers hitters have to turn up the dial a little bit after facing Kyle with 86 87 all night, now dealing with Edwards. From 86 87 with sink to 95 with cut. Shallow left center. Under it is Russell. And it's the second out. Now tough out. Aguilar, real good pinch hitter. Actually, as a starter this year, he's batting 481. Yeah, well, he's put up great numbers so far. Game winning hit the other day. Um, good pinch hitter uh, last year. Uh, really good against left handed pitching, but uh, highly unlikely that that opportunity would have presented itself here tonight. Here in the eighth is going to be Edwards and Morrow to finish this ball game. Sogard left handed hitter also on the bench for the Brewers but it's not really a big platoon advantage to run a lefty up there against Carl because of that cutting fastball. Right and, and I think if you're a Craig Council you're not sure if you're going to be able to use another pinch hitter because it'll come back to the top of the order where you won't pinch hit and an Aguilar guy who can hit the ball out of the ballpark in a one run game. Oh and two. Yeah, also a guy who you know, can work a walk too. I mean, uh, this stage of the game, you're willing to to fire all your bullets if he were able to reach. You probably pinch run for him. He went for strike three. So the Cubs will bat in the bottom of the eighth. After Edwards goes one, two, three, it's one to nothing.
time. Only run of this game. Kyle Schwarber with a line drive. They went 397 feet. And seventh of the year. That was in the sixth inning. We're now in the eighth. Hey, that was pretty cool how that uh, green line tracked the ball there. Trigger just stayed right on it. Well, that's the goal. New pitcher for Milwaukee is right hander Jacob Barnes. Power arm, mid 90s heater, and a, and a cutter. It doesn't really go soft very much. And part of the, an outstanding Brewers bullpen. Probably been the best part of this club, even without Corey Knebel. It's really been something else. 11 games for him and a 126 ERA. Five relievers in a one and a half or lower. Yeah, check out those numbers. Jeffers Hader, Hader who's <laughs> unbelievable in terms of the strikeouts, Barnes and the veterans, Albers and Jennings, all sub twos. This bullpen has not allowed an earned run over the last 28 innings. How about 11 hits and six walks in those 28 innings? Two and one to Hayward. Collectively, uh, Brewers Pan has a 247 earned run average. That's second only to the Diamondbacks in the National League. Brandon Morrow, he's been lights out as well. He'll get the ninth. Backs the 184, then Brewers, Padres, and Cubs. Best bullpen ERAs in the National League. As we mentioned earlier, the Diamondbacks won again today. Eight to two at Philadelphia. And, uh, you know, with Knable out. Council's kind of they haven't had a ton of save opportunities but he's moving them around. Um, it will be inter interesting to see what he does when Knebel comes back in all likelihood Knebel will become his ninth inning man again. But I think again I think they're going to be better off because of it. Yeah you find out what you have. Certain guys will get. Late inning opportunities they normally wouldn't have and. Yeah, and you'll find out about them, and you'll feel more comfortable using them. And they'll be more comfortable when they're put into those situations. And if they're in this thing in September, they'll have a more rested Corey Knebel. Assuming he comes back and is fully recovered from the hamstring issue. He struck him out. Hayward knew it. Bring up Wilson Contreras for the first time. Came in to catch in the top of the eighth. He homered on Tuesday night in Cleveland. His first of the year. And he bounces one into center field. For two with a walk, caught stealing and a great catch in center.
There's a base hit to left. Back to back hits with one out. A chance for a little insurance here in the bottom half of the eighth as uh, Schwarber will be next with a couple of men on base. It's hitting streak now moves to nine. That's the really best are there. Must be a cutter moving away and it stayed right there on the inner half. Contreras at second, Almora's at first, Schwarber the batter. A screaming liner for a home run in the sixth inning. That was off Anderson, now facing Jacob Barnes. Here we go. Could be two. Arcia will step on second. And it is two. And we will go to the ninth. Brandon Morrow against the top of the Milwaukee order. Hendricks with seven shutout innings tonight. Very few base runners. He was terrific. Yeah, he, he made a very few mistakes over the heart of the play. Gave up a couple of hard hit balls that turned into outs, and then the, you know the double by Braun early, but uh, really not put on, under any pressure at all all night long. Just a masterful performance by Hendricks, as you see in half. He takes over in left field, and Brandon Morrow out there to try to preserve this one to nothing lead. A reminder Benny's Beverage Depot is the official champagne provider of the Chicago Cubs. Moore looking for his fifth save. Ninth appearance. He has finished every appearance. He's finished the game. He's got eight games finished. Half of those successful saves. The 0 1 to Kane is high. Comes out of that pen throwing 97, 98 miles per hour. Really good movement on his fastball. Yeah, he's been around for a while, and when you, you think of stuff guys, these days, you think of the 23, 24 year old 
kid you'd never heard of throwing 102. Well, Brandon is 33 years old. Yeah, and he's dealt with some injuries over the course of his career. Kane with a leadoff base hit. So the tying run is on base. I said a little bit ago that, that Hendricks wasn't under duress all night long. Well, he's under duress now as he's watching. This going to be painful for a pitcher trying to get that W. And the leadoff man reaches. Two seamer move back to the plate a little bit. Kane shoots it the other way for a leadoff knock. Yeah, so if you knew, if you knew uh, uh, Morrow's backstory, first round pick, big arm, young, talented, you know, uh, rotation piece earlier in his career, had some really big moments, then got hurt, and he comes all the way back, and you might think, well, now he's getting by on guile and craftiness and all that. No, he's a guy who can still light up the radar gun. Big swing and a miss by Yelich. And this is a formidable top of the Brewers' order. Left hander Josh Hader is up. In case the Brewers scratch out a run or two. And Brandon Morrow trying to keep them off the board. Good pitch. Yeah, well, that's the other thing. He can locate too. And now, every now and then we see it, see it get away from him and he'll leave the ball up. It flies open, maybe trying to overthrow. But when he stays closed and trusted, comes out nice and easy. 98, and he painted. 0-2 oh to Yelich, Braun in the on-deck circle. Brandon kind of leans into that pitch. Now one and two. Kane can run. He's got five steals. And the math changes with uh, Contreras back there. Hit hard but foul to left. 99 on the gun that time for Morrow. Well, it's just getting into the prime of his career. He's 26. First year with his new team. And he takes outside. Two and two. And now Rizzo asking for time and he wants Contreras to meet him on the mound. The Cubs have plenty of visits remaining. This will be their second of six. This is the first time. Correct me if I'm wrong. They've had a, a base runner prior to two outs in the inning. Full count. Well, it's one of those guys you get the jump on him, and he, he still battles. He stays in the the at bat. A non base percentage over 400. He's a tough strikeout. Yeah, you're right. All the all the other base runners came after two are out. Hendricks spread out four hits over his seven innings. Chance for two. Four to three. Double play. Nice play by Baez. He may have been slightly screened by the umpire Eric Cooper. But no problem. Yeah, I thought they might start Kane there on three and two, but you know, even though Yellich doesn't strike out a lot, you got a guy in the mound throwing 99 miles an hour, so probably a little more concerned of the with the strikeout double play then what ultimately did happen. The base is empty. Two down ninth inning. Here's Braun.
Tough play, Listella, and he won't make a throw. Of all of the potential outcomes with Morrow against Braun, that was one I hadn't considered. Braun does run well, but you know, he was thinking about trying to park one in the seats and Morrow trying to miss a bat. Got on top of that sinking fastball, beat it into the dirt. So it's a little justice maybe for Braun, who had a bullet last time, but Fires made a heck of a play snaring a line drive off of his bat. Not out of the woods yet. Here's Shaw. Travis Shaw with two outs and a man on. The fans on their feet. Strike one. I'm not afraid. I mean, dangerous hitter up there with all kinds of power and attacks him with that good heater. Pitched 45 times in the regular season for the Dodgers last year, had a 206 ERA, did not allow a single home run with LA. Trying to make it four out of five against Milwaukee to start the season series and a high fly ball left field. That is Ian Happ. And he's got it. Cubs win. Exhale, Kyle. Ooh. Can of corn. Never doubt. So the Cubs hold on one nothing the final. Kyle Hendricks gets the win over Chase Anderson. My first thought was Hap's got a beat on it. He's fine, but he kept drifting. Yeah, it got a little scary there at the end. <laughs> yeah. Beats back, finds the wall, finds the ball, and all's well and ends well. What a game. So more <laughs> is his fifth save. Takes a look at his catcher. Just like we planned. Tenth loss for Milwaukee. Four of those have been against the Cubs the Cubs have shut him out what three times right yeah twice in, up there in Milwaukee and now here tonight so uh, you know, John Lester despite losing was really good last night Chatwood pretty solid last time he was out there the starting rotation has uh, struggled uh, so far this year to a certain extent but rounding into form now and, and Hendricks was classic Hendricks here tonight, you know, Joe's been talking throughout spring training and in the early season about uh, the art of the game, bringing art back to baseball. Well, when you watch Kyle Hendricks pitch, you're watching an artist. Cubs uh, now 12 and 10 on the year. Three more to go this weekend. And for JD, for Doug Lanville, our entire crew, Len Casper saying so long, and we'll have more Cubs baseball tomorrow, 12:30 for a pregame coverage.